All right, guys, we're going to ask someone if they want to join us in today's video, Chasing Big Walleyes Fishing. This guy's been hanging out in the parking lot here. He's got a sweet rig. Um, we'll see if he'll join us. Oh, let's see. You want to go walleye fishing with us? Hello? All right, well, he's, check out his rig, too. He's got the outboard. Sweet, sweet rig. But anyways, um, that's the rig you can see right behind you, the Alumacraft. And we are going to try to go put the meat down, beat down, smack down, crack down on them. Last week, the walleyes were pre-spawn. This week, probably 80, 90% are post-spawn. So we're out on the bay. On the western side, we're going to actually chase big suspended fish out that are going to come out once they dump their eggs and just suspend. So we're going to try trolling crankbaits, show you guys how to catch some big walleyes, trolling cranks, crank them, spank them. Right, Tony? You ready? Ready. Here we go. All right, guys, so we are trolling for suspended walleyes out here outside the mouth of Menominee River in this dirty water out in anywhere from 20 to 30 feet of water. So the key is we're trying to catch these fish that are down anywhere from 10 to 15 feet. And you can use a variety of different types of crankbaits from a scatter wrap to a deep diving um, thunder stick, a husky jerk, a bomber or a bandit. Bam bombers work as well. And then the flicker minnows. So really these are my go-to, the thunder stick, flicker minnow, husky jerk, and the bandits. Deep divers, the big ones, I'm going after big bites, right? Big bites, big fish, so we're running big baits. So we're running them anywhere from 60 to 90 feet back that's going to get our baits down anywhere from about 15 to 19 feet that's what we're doing here we go it was trashing kind of decent and then all of a sudden she's been back i don't think jerking i don't fish 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 is it good fish yep You guys are letting me reel in. You guys are gonna let me reel this in? Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. And he's letting me reel this one in. We just started trolling our first pass here, and we're hooked up. And this is, I believe, deep diving flicker minnow, fire tiger, I think. Not 100% sure. Should be a big walleye. That's what we're after. Big walleyes. Big suspended walleyes. What we might do in a little bit is we might throw some ripping wraps to try to cast, but we're, we got a lot of dirty water coming out the river mouth here, and it goes out like a half mile, three quarters of a mile. We're just trying to go over it and troll real quick with deep diving cranks, see if we can get some of the suspended fish we're seeing or fish right on the bottom. So we'll see what happens. Tony it's not always the most fun way to catch a big walleye, just reeling them in trolling. But I like just catching fish. And Andy and I were talking about it before. Like, if you want to be a great fisherman you're, and you want to be a great walleye fisherman, there's more to just being a great caster with live scope or shiver minnows. Some guys say, well, I don't want to troll. You know, well, well, I mean, that's great. But there are just times when trolling will outfish casting and jigging and vice versa. Jigging will outfish trolling. Green Bay is a great place to come and jig. It's a great place to cast for walleyes, but if you go to Erie or other bodies of water, you're gonna be dealing with a great, you just gotta know how to troll. And that's what we're doing. We're putting, I don't spend a lot of time trolling so much anymore. So I'm just putting some time in right now. Easy, that's a big heavy fish. Feels pretty heavy, Andy. I got one trolling, guys, and I think it's a lunker. We're gonna have issues here, guys. We're gonna have a mess. We might be in two lines. Yep, he might be in two lines. There he is up top. Nice big walleye. Big yeah, He's big. Yeah. All right, Andy. All right. That's a big one we want. That's why you're out here for 30 inches like this, guys. Oh yeah. 
That's a freaking stud. Hell yeah. First one, lift that tank oh my up. God. Look at that freaking stud. Ooh. That's a 32. Oh, oh yeah, that's a freaking giant. Giant. This we're fishing guys. We got a tournament tomorrow. We're pre-fishing So we're just trying to get a pattern figured out For a walleye tournament and you can clearly see I got my tangle. I got my tangles figured out I told you that's what I was worried about that what happened is this fish just stayed down and got tangled in all our lines But this is a giant Look at that tank It's a 30 all day. Nope 30 30? Yep. Wow. Right at 30. Yep, I'll take the inside. Oh, look at the fish here. Look, 20 feet, 18, 20 feet down. See that? Those are walleyes. That's a walleye. That's what we're looking for right there, guys. That fish is 20 feet down. 15, actually. So we'll make some adjustments, bring some baits up a little higher. All right, Tony, you can start reeling that in. Is that backboard dumping back? It is. Uh, no. Right? No, I think it's just straight I've been looking at it. I've been watching it. Oh, I didn't know it was that far back, I guess. This is what I'm trying to try get out with this in that 15 to 20 foot deck. Remember that when you get to, when you get to the planer board, look at how much lines on there. Okay. Looks like it's going to be about 90. By the way. Good one? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. We'll take them. Average size, nice fish, probably 27, 28 incher on the bomber. Nice catch, Tony. What a great Good catch, job. Tony! Thank you. Alright guys, so I'm up in the front of the boat watching the live scope. Andy's panning this back and forth. So what I'm doing up here is I'm just watching for fish. I'm seeing if there's any suspended fish, Eric was having me come up here and watch if there's any fish suspended, if they're on the bottom, where these fish are gonna be. So that's what I'm doing. I'm relaying that information back to them. And then Eric's just uh, putting out those rods at those depths where we're seeing you know, the majority of our fish. There's a lot of fish on bottom. There is a couple fish that I've kind of been seeing. Like here's the fish right here. That was just a faint, faint one. 22 feet, Eric. So that was actually perfect. There's a fish that was rolling in there. When the lives goes going back and forth as quickly as it is, you won't get the best picture of a fish. So you're just looking for, like here's another one coming in right here. 16 feet, there's another one. So as you guys saw there, there was two fish that came in. So I'm just letting Eric know in the back where we're seeing these fish. He's dropping those baits back. Here comes another one. So he's dropping those baits back and then we're catching them. So we're, let's keep catching them. All right, guys, I just paused the screen. That's exactly what we're looking for right there. Big suspended mark. Can you guys see it? Pause the screen so you, hopefully you guys can get a good shot of that. But that's what we're looking for right there. Play the screen again. Big fish at 15. Big fish. All right, Andy, nice job. We just made that adjustment. Andy brought his baits in and he went higher. 
little quick trolling session here this evening. Oh, my battery's dying. Is she gone? Does that always happen when we get a fish on? It seems to. All right, we are back to recording. We are do making ch camera changes. There's my man, Tony. We got her. We back in action. Andy's hooked up. Just getting our line. We made a little change. We've raised our baits up higher because we saw them on live scope, eight to 10 feet down. So we're running them 35 to 45 back now, deep divers. So same baits, just ran them higher because we saw them higher. All right, good job. Good teamwork. There's a little bit of bop. So staying down. Staying down. When Andy says it doesn't feel big, that means it's going to be big. There it is, I see it. Not bad, 26 incher. Barely hooked, golf, last yeah, hook. Just lift straight up, Andy, walk back. There you go. Not bad. As I open up the motor. Nice. Thank you. On the flicker minnow. Did we not get tangled? No, we are not tangled. That's an amazing feat right there. I'll stand up here because I'm the captain of the boat. Thank you guys. My name is Captain Hadia. I run the walleye series up here. I just caught a 30 incher. My name is Eric Hadia. I have a brand new boat. Well, fish do poop. Come on. We're doubled. Are you? Are you? Yeah. For real? Yeah, for real. We're doubled up. Or do you have a I'm doubled up. We got a fish on. We're doubled. We got a du double header on. Yeah, I'm not full of what are you talking about? Get the net, you dumb potato. Get the net. Tony thinks we only have one fish on. He's like, oh, you, you don't have one on. Yeah, dude, this is a long line. Guess who picked out this bait? Me. Yeah. Look at this. Nice, Andy, trade. There we go. There we go, long line and 26 incher. I ran that bait back about 80 feet behind the boat. Tony picked that out. The old flicker shad, flicker minnow, sorry. 80 feet back. Guys, what we're gonna do, check it out. I'm gonna pull a little prank today when we go back to our buddy Tommy. We caught a sucker and we are going to cook up a sucker for our buddy Tommy. He's gonna think he's eating a nice walleye, but no, he's eating a sucker. Another fish. Another, another fish. fish? Yep. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yep. Another fish. Here we go. Yep. It is that time of the day. Alright. <sighs> Nothing like getting it dialed in the day before the tournament. Yep. You might be in that one, but. Alright, there you go. <laughs> We're gonna just leave that fish on. That's a good fish too, Andy. Feels all right. I don't mind trolling. I mean, it's it's boring to a lot of people, but like I've said, not when this happens. When you get giant fish, I don't care. I'll take them. Prefer to get them casting, but there's definitely an art and skill to guys that are master trollers. That you know that use one color, two color fish in the river. You know, trolling has its time and place. Not everybody's gonna buy live scope. It is actually one of the simplest ways to catch giant fish. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. You come out here and you run these, these deep diving crankbaits anywhere from 30, 40, 50, 60 back on your planer boards. Anywhere out in the bay throughout the summer, you're bound to catch big walleyes, day or night. And I like these big deep diving, the, the crankbaits in the dirty water and stick baits work good as well. Oh yeah, be another big hog. Oh yeah, dude, it's a big one. It's a big one. 
she looked like a upper 20 or 30 inch class fish. Here we go. Yeah, you're good. Nice fish, 28. Oh, yep. Nice fish. There we go. Really good fish. There we go. Look at that. I called her 28, Andy. Let's see, let's bump her real quick and then we're gonna get her back. Almost 28 inches. All right, keep her in the water for a sec. Over on the side, heads up, move your rod. But look at what this fish just spit up. You wanna fish big baits? Just spit up a brown trout. All right, guys, big post-spawn walleyes. Andy got his big in. I got my big in. We got a 30 and a 28. Gonna get them back. There she goes. There goes mine. All right. We got another fish on. Another fish on. Oh, we, go ahead, Tony. We got another fish on. You take this one. Right there. Yep. All right. That's good. That's that's the adjustment. That's called getting it dialed in right there. So sometimes when you're out here, guys, the big adjustment that we made today, and this is what, you know, is figuring out the depth that you need to set your lures at, which means we trolled, made a pass through here with our baits down 90, 100, 60, 70. We got one bait, one bite, one big fish, but then we saw a lot of fish up higher. We brought our baits up higher and we're having much more success right away. So. You have to, if you don't have live scope, just remember that these fish will be down 5, 10, 15 feet in the water column a lot. So you don't have to let out a bunch of line behind your bait. Why does that keep opening? Ready? Go down to me. Yep. Still up. Yeah. Technically a triple, but we can only reel in so many fish. That's right. We're starting to get her dialed in, boys. Looks like another solid 28. That's on the scatter wrap. It's one of the best baits. Yep. Keep... Nice teamwork, guys. Nice teamwork. All right. Trolling post spawn walleyes, guys. That's a nice, look at the girth on that thing. Beautiful. Wow. It's on a scatter wrap, guys. That was back 60 feet on a scatter wrap. Oh yeah, that's a spawned out fish. Positive, absolutely. Just a real big thick one. All right, we'll get some pictures real quick with you, Tony. We're gonna get this girl right back, right away. Go in the back. Gold. See you later, big mama. That's a great, great looking fish. See you She's going great. Heck yes. Hell yeah. All right, guys. So we're going to wrap up this week's video. For, for those of you that are looking to learn how to troll, a lot of guys say, you know, like trolling's boring, trolling's lame. If you caught it trolling, it doesn't count or blah, blah, blah. But Andy and I were just talking about it. Like if you go to Lake Erie, you go to other parts, like trolling can, can actually be the most effective thing, especially for big fish. Yes, we like to cast. You're gonna see a lot of casting videos, guys. But for those of you guys that wanna come up here and try trolling or try to catch big fish, make sure you have trolling in your arsenal. Get some trees, get some boards, get some deep diving crankbaits and hang on. We had a fun day. We figured out a little pattern today. We got them high, we kinda of got a few deep and hopefully you enjoyed this week's video. Subscribe, leave me a comment. Do you like to troll or do you like to cast? Leave me a comment. We're out. We got a storm coming. Tony's got to go. Second shift KFC. See ya.